Welcome down to the Malton Man Cave. I'm Keith. And I'm Dave. Tonight we're going to be staying in my favorite region, good old Campbelltown. Campbelltown. Bring it on down to Campbelltown. I'm so embarrassed for you. <laughs> so tonight, we're going to be doing, as Dave said, a whiskey from Campbelltown. Good old Kilcarran 15 single cask Oloroso. I think very many people are going to be jealous of us that we have this. Um, we already re reviewed the Kilcarran 8 Richard Oloroso cast strength, which mm -hmm. a lot of people have been raving about. Me and you didn't quite love it as much as... I mean, I really liked it. It's an amazing eight-year-old. You liked it, but yeah. An amazing eight-year-old. But just... I mean, I thought it was going to be like a 93 out of 100 good. Yeah. And it was definitely an amazing eight-year-old whiskey. Just not quite as good. Um, this is pretty much what I thought the eight-year-old was going to be plus some. So, without ruining it too much. Kilcarran 12... I'm sorry. <laughs> Kilcarran 15 Single Cask Oloroso. Comes in at 51.5% ABV, is non-chill filtered and not colored, and oh my goodness. Mm. Look at that. Darkness. Good, good color. This says, um, distilled in May of 2004, bottled in 2019, the age is 15 years, strength is what we already said, 51.5, and there's only 280 bottles of this. Wow. So this is some history that very few get to enjoy. Um, this Kilcarran single malt scotch whiskey has been matured for 10 years in fresh Oloroso sherry butts, so first fill, followed by five years in a refill bourbon hogshead. Um, specifically bottled for Pacific Edge USA. It's like an import company, which I love because that's where we get most of our spring banks, long rows, etc. To celebrate the 15th anniversary of the opening of Glen Guyle Distillery in 2004. Boom. Um, I'm not going to get into too much, you know, spring bank. Kill care and just how much I love them. I think you can go back and watch any of your other reviews where we talk about just the fun facts about it, why we love them. It's just kind of one of the most independent, um, just farm distillery, not farm distillery, I guess, just craft distillery. It's just independent and they just make everything the right way. It's just when you think, <clears throat> when you think of a distillery, it, that's a good example of doing, what, doing things the right way. Yeah. Well, you would point to. Yep. So without further ado, Let's get into some whiskey. Oh. The the uh, the dark sap pours. Oh, and it's gotten so much better as it, it's gone down. It's gotten so much better. Look at that color one last time before I put it away. Mm. Amazing stuff, David. What mm. do you get on the schnoz? On the on the old schnoz. Um, it was funny because the first, uh, if you've been a fan of the show, Raisin Wine Vinegar. Uh, was that, that the Bob Blair 90? I think so. Uh, it was Welsh Torah, or who was it that made fun of you for the... For no, the, I don't think it was no, like Corey I thought they agreed. I thought they agreed. Yeah. Somebody agreed. Somebody gave you... Uh, maybe it gave me a little trouble for it. Um, but it just, so raisin the wine, wine, the raisins... But vinegar, I swear, yeah. but it's a, um, I, I wrote apple cider vinegar. Mm -hmm. um, man, it reminds me of like how many uh, mothers, re old wives tale rest like. About how that fixes everything. Yeah, brush everybody. your teeth. Oh, you're out of toothpaste when you're a kid. Use some vinegar yeah. or something crazy. I heard something else the other day about something that it supposedly cures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But to me, and we've talked about this before, yeah. so sorry for you re recurring viewers. Ah. You guys are probably getting sick of it. But for, for me, not everybody likes the sour, the vinegar stuff, but that is what separates um, Spring Bank to me yeah. is um, you sometimes you get the savory umami flavor. Sometimes you get the vinegar sour notes with it on top of, you know, like peed or, you know, bourbon matured orchard fruits, or you get like the yeah. chocolatey espresso notes from the... It's just... You know, very, it's a very strange pairing. It, you take that with the high ABV and it just confuses. It's a very nice little confusion in your mouth. Yeah. So, yeah. um, also I wrote pipe leaf tobacco reminded me of, uh, what was the signature 
blend that we would get from the war. Oh, I know. Inc incredible something? Something, but it was like incredible, but it was, that's not it. Yeah. That'll I, come to us. I wish it was. I, I wish I knew it. Um, some woody earth. I, it reminded me of. Like indescribable. A indescribable. That, yeah. Maybe? Maybe. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Um, like a creek bed, mossy, wet stones. Yep. How about you, man? So I get, so again, I loved the eight cast drink, the Richard Oloroso. But one of the things, the only thing that was kind of holding it back, it had this cedar wood and bamboo, like woody note that I normally really like, but it almost took over the show a little bit too much almost. Mm. And this is still very, very prevalent. The, like it's very, very noticeable. The cedar wood, the bamboo, but it's, but behind it, there's a lot more richness and it doesn't completely steal the show like it did in the eight. Now you still had some of the dirty notes, the sherry notes, the good notes in the eight, but this one is more refined. It, the, the oaky notes, they don't steal the show. Behind all that bamboo and like cedar wood is the traditional, what I get in spring bank, long row, kill Karen, that sugar dough cookies or underbaked sugar dough cookie, sugar cookie dough. Yeah. Um, salty sh sugar cookie dough i get kind of chocolate mocha espresso mm. maraschino cherries obviously like that spring bank soot diesel fuel sorry <laughs> the sour and like vinegar notes. spring bank soot who would who would have thought that that tastes good but i enjoy it <laughs> Scott from Scott's Test Dummies, I was, I don't know what, what he was saying, I think in the comments, he's like, I'm still not sure if I like it. He's like, part of me thinks I love it. Do I love it or do I hate it? I was like, <laughs> you love it. You love it. And then there's a little bit of like salt and pepper. Salt and pepper at the end. Salt and pepper. What do you get on the palate? Mm. So little smoky, a little minty to me. Um, it reminded me very much of this chicken wing that... There is a minty note. <clears throat> a little, Chocolate mint, almost. A little, little mint. Um, I wrote, it, the flavor is called Hatch Chili, and it reminds me, it's it's got like a, a heat to it. Yeah, I put then, chili flakes in mine. Um, but then a sweetness, like a lime sweetness, uh, citrusy... Um, note and then uh, the tobacco is still there for me um, and uh, some of the earth more earthy notes things like that um, definitely the uh, the dark fruits are very prevalent but not not in a negative way for me um, it's not overpowering all the other things that are very uh, intriguing how about you I knew this was going to be like a favorite of Keith's because he poured me a little bit and then he was like, uh, and he took a little bit back. <laughs> that's not why I did that. I didn't, I'm that's totally not kidding. why I did that. I'm totally kidding. But no, he really did take a little bit back. <laughs> but that, I didn't think you'd want that much. Normally you say you don't want that much. No, no, no. You're, you, you and were this right is on the money. This is something that I wasn't always sure was if you would just, like. It was just funny to me because it you was, knew. It was a completely because clean you knew, glass. Because you knew that it, I probably wouldn't appreciate it as much as you would. That's not what I did. I really thought we were going to use that a little bit and then pour as much as you want for the review. Oh, there we go. So you can, we can have some more after this, buddy. <laughs> if you like it. I'm interested to see your malted man cave mark first. I know, you should. So for me on the palette, it's, it's dirty, it's funky, but it's still sweet. And that was kind of... The eight had sweetness, but it just wasn't quite as sweet as I would like. So it's dirty, funky, but still sweet. It's got the salted caramel mocha, like a drink you'd get from like Starbucks, a salted caramel mocha. Yeah. It's got, this time it was more, I mean, the bamboo and the cedar wood kind of, it's still, it's still there and it's still prominent. But then again, the sugar dough cookies is in the background lurking. Um, this time it wasn't maraschino cherries for me. It was almost like a sour cherry candy like a like, yeah, a, I gotcha. like a sour patch now it doesn't taste like sour patch kids but like yeah a type of artificial Something similar. sour cherry candy um let me take another step a 
again, vinegar, soot, like diesel fuel. Yeah. But then it, but then it becomes candied again. So it's like dirty, grimy, but then it becomes sweet and candied. It's like a Tide Pod. It's, it looks it delicious. Is, this is one of the perfectly a Tide Pod. <laughs> it's like perfectly balanced of like dirty and not sweet, but then like really candied sweet. So yeah, pretty good stuff. What about the finish? Hmm. I forgot to, like, I also get some uh, chili flakes. Mm -hmm. There's that heat, salt and pepper, and little chili flakes. So, it is a, a medium, medium mm -hmm. uh, uh, finish. Some of it lingers, though. I feel like that, that the cedar lingers a little bit. It's more drying. Um, yes. Yes. Some chili flakes almost. It's a little hot. Yeah. Peppery. Yeah, it leaves you like you like you ate like you just got done bashing chocolate. Some it's wings. like like you just or some you just had some chocolate and chili flakes. And there you go, chocolate and chili flakes. So there's some like I think it was Whiskey Scout and some other people, maybe even Scotch Test they had yeah. like there's this like chocolate that's like from like Tabasco, like but also chocolatey. Uh, and they love it. I don't yeah. know if I would like it. I've never had it. Have you I'm ever sure. had chocolate like mixed with like Come on. Chili flakes are like... I bet it's delicious. It's chocolate and I don't know. anything. Is, Maybe. Yeah. Chocolate and salt. Can't beat it. Oh, yeah. I love salty and sweet. Yeah. So for me, I get it's medium. Yeah. Maybe even borderline getting closer to long, but medium yeah. to long. Um, again, you get cedar wood, bamboo, salted caramel mocha. Let me take another sip. Hmm. That mintiness stays too. Mm -hmm. Chocolate mint. Mm -hmm. Espresso, like coffee express espresso. Um, a little bit of chili flakes, a little soot, dirtiness. Yeah. Malted. It's like a dirty, a dirty Andes mint. <laughs> I think that's a great way to describe it. Yeah. It's a little chili flakes and pepper and salt and soot and fell, <laughs> fell on the carpet at the pond of Some Sugar dough cookies. All right. Malted Bandcamp. Mark, what again you give this? Uh, I really enjoyed this. This was... Uh, so, uh, when Keith poured it, let me take do a little notes, have a little quiet time. And uh, I have to admit, I looked at the bottle and I was like, Hello, Rosa. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy. I thought you'd been liking some I have. I have. And this... And this uh, this further kind of just kind of helped me see a little bit of the light at, in some of the things. It was very good, uh, much better than its earlier earlier version. I will in a second. Um, I'm gonna give it a strong uh, 90. 90? Yeah. It's good for you. Yeah, yeah, it's a 90, which is fantastic. How um, about you? 92.5. All right. It's. You know, I was like 91, 92, 93, anywhere in there. It's stinking good. And I'm yeah. guessing this is probably going to get even better because I drank this down pretty quick. And I poured some samples for people um, and shared it with a couple of people as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. again, shout out to Dustin. Um, he found this and picked it up for me because he knew I love Kill Karen. So, thank you, Dustin. Um, anything else I want to say about this? So, yeah, 92.5 for me. Boom. Um Question of the night. Mm. March Madness is coming up. I just watched um, the Lakers versus the New Orleans Pelicans last night, Zion and LeBron James. So it's kind of twofold. Originally, I, I kind of just wanted to talk about what the, what's the best dunk you've ever seen in the NBA or college or mm -hmm. in the history of basketball. And then um, after watching the game, and, and I was texting back and forth with my dad, my brother-in-law, and Dave, and some other basketball fans. Um, do you think... Zion is going to become a generational like type player. Mm -hmm. So, Dave already knows my answer about that. But um, go, me go. Okay. So first, we're going to talk about Zion. Don't steal all the things I said. Either. All right. So, so Zion, fantastic, fantastic uh, player. Yeah, he's going to do great things. Um, I think his. Ligaments are going to explode like out, of his, out of his sides of his his kneecaps. 
and his ankles are just gonna explode. I the human body just cannot. I mean, look at look at Bo Jackson, look at every athlete that had quickness paired with size, and you're gonna Except see... for LeBron. To play devil's advocate, everybody said the same thing about LeBron James. But, but he has is an... completely different. He's always been somewhat shorter and thicker. He... And he got a dunk. <laughs> he got a dunk. He got a dunk. Yes. He got a dunk. You're he talking got a... about you're talking about four inches and LeBron James is spread out. Yeah. Um, I agree. Yeah. But people still thought that because compared to other people, like he was yeah. bulky. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. Zion's taking it to a whole other level. So um, I just think from a health standpoint, he's not going to be able to to do it. to, to in, in an NBA schedule, Yeah, he's never going to see the majority of a season if he, if he keeps yeah. that weight on him. I don't know if he can play. See, it's that Dennis Rodman, you lose the weight, you lose that ability to, to muscle people out underneath because he needs it because he's short. Yep. Um, shorter than Draymond, and yep. Draymond's got a seven foot uh wingspan, <laughs> and Draymond plays dirty and likes to kick people. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you, you're talking about being a better, better defensive post player than yep. an already undersized center. It's just tough. It's a, it's tough. I liked what you said. Five years, probably an all star. All star for probably four, or five, yeah. six years. I just don't think he's going to be a generational player like MJ, Kobe, yeah, that's gonna be tough. LeBron, like kind of the hype. So one thing I kind of noticed about him is just because he is so thick. Um, I don't, I don't see that lateral quickness that you kind of need to have to go one on one on a regular basis. So he doesn't have an outside shot yet. He could develop it, and that could completely change. My opinion on him, if he develops a consistent, awesome three or 15 foot jumper, got a, so it's possible that I, I could possibly take back what I'm saying about him. Um, he is exciting to to watch. He got some dunk, but he doesn't really have that one on one lateral like get to the. He does. He can get the battle, but like the other night against the Lakers, a lot of his points were on alley oops. Yeah. He got a brute couple rebounds, like brute force. I didn't see him a whole lot of like doing sweet moves and burning by burning by people. Yeah. He kind of one direction. He doesn't cut real well. So he could lose weight. Maybe he could skim down, and maybe that could also change things. I just don't think he's going to be quite the generational player um, that he's hyped up to be. I think he'll be an all-star, but nah. Second part of the question of the night, best dunk ever in the history of basketball. Okay. Dave already knows mine. Should I tell mine since I already Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, because I agree, this is one of the best. I mean, yeah, come on. all right. Vince Carter's already. Vince Carter is one of the best dunkers in NBA history. In the, well, I don't know what year of the Olympics it was, but he literally. It was he, like 2001 or 2002. Look it up. He literally, you know, you say a lot of times, oh, he jumped, he dunked over him. Dude literally jumped from like 10 feet out and jumped over a seven footer and literally went over top of his head, put his hand on his shoulder and his neck, crammed his head down in shame, and then dunked on him. I've never seen a dunk like that in my history of my life. Now, it's not the fanciest dunk, but just, just sheer power and height and the shame on like a seven foot two guy that he did it on. Like, yeah, no one would have think like coming up like at that angle. Oh, he's going to jump over top of him for this dunk. He just it's unbelievable. He just kept up. going up, kept going up. Um, mine would have to be. Vince Carter, 2000 slam dunk contest, every dunk. <laughs> the reverse, I like mean, between the legs. We had just never seen anything yeah. before like it. I, I, never. Um, I was going to say, I was going to say iconic uh, MJ, uh, that dunk. Um, but then, it, but and at the time it was, but people and, have like outdone that by going between the legs. From yeah, the, from the yeah, yeah. Lines, so so like, iconic, yes. MJ is from the three, they're... Forever, people will do a little play on that and things like that. But Vince Carter, 2000, the first slam dunk contest, it mm -hmm. was just like, oh, this is what we're doing now. <laughs> we're, it's a whole nother level. We're not doing it that that way. We're, right. we're, it, this makes sense. Like, that, this is that one where he, like... like he did uh, a reverse 360. Yeah, yeah. Like it was like a 360 and then another half and then like a tomahawk at yes. the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just ridiculous. Off the side of the backboard, um, through the legs. 
um, where he goes elbow deep down into yeah, that it. That was awesome. Um, he hit like four that were like could be like a toss up for the so. Anyway, so uh, Vince Carter two thousand slam dunk contest. Yep. Yep. So leave in the comments. Tell us what you think about Zion. You still playing too? Huh? Oh my god. Vinny still That's playing. That's impressive, man. And he you, totally he developed a talk three about point changing shot. Changing games. Yeah. Talk, talk about changing. Uh, three and D guy now. Yeah. And a locker What a leader. great athlete. Yeah. Yeah. He's underappreciated. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, so tell us what you think about Zion. If you think he's going to be a generational player or just an also or completely a bomb completely. I don't think so. I mean, no. he's, he's already like scoring like 25 just, points a game as like, like a teenager. He's like, my ball. <laughs> <laughs> don't touch it. It was, I couldn't believe that he was the one guarding Anthony Davis. <laughs> he did pretty good on it. Oh, yeah. Like, I was like, mm. He's like getting, a honey badger. With, like, honey, he gets that ball. He just don't care. He just has to get that ball. <laughs> so leave us a comment what you think about him and also maybe what you think the greatest dunk of all time was in NBA, college, or just any, anything historically in basketball. So as always, scotch is king, as is evidence here. But bourbon is always best. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not with... Uh, this old 15-year-old right here. Ooh, that sounds weird. <laughs>